This is the 10 Eyewitness News with Juanita Phillips. Good evening. Violence is escalating in the Balkan states with Serbian forces continuing to shell the Bosnian capital of Sarajevo. The bloody ethnic war continues despite a United Nations decision to impose sanctions. Exasperated by the bloodshed, the United Nations Security Council chose to isolate Serbia and Montenegro, Yugoslavia's two remaining states. The international community will not tolerate the use of force and terror to settle political and territorial disputes. The UN imposed an embargo on trade, including oil supplies. Yugoslavia's foreign assets will be frozen, its air links cut, and there'll be an end to sporting contacts. The sanctions came despite a last-ditch plea from Belgrade. In the end, only Zimbabwe and China abstained. In Belgrade, motorists are queuing for petrol. The sanctions exempt food and medicine, but the economic effects will be harsh. Meanwhile, in Brisbane, a rousing welcome for the Croatian Premier, who's in Australia to lobby the government over the sanctions issue. Stipe Mesic, a former president of Yugoslavia, says sanctions may not be enough to stop the violence. He says military intervention may be needed to stop Serbia's aggression. Prime Minister Paul Keating has signalled a number of major policy initiatives today in a bid to lift the government's sagging fortunes following a couple of disastrous weeks. He's foreshadowed the sale of 70% of emerged Qantas and Australian Airlines following the failure of sales first proposed in 1990. The scheme will go to Cabinet this week. Also headed for change, pay television policy. Cabinet is expected to overturn a long-held preference for satellite technology as the sole carrier of pay TV signals. Communications Minister Bob Collins will be told to investigate the options. And a little tough talking. Mr Keating says Canberra could build its own separate TAFE system if the states refuse to cooperate over funding of post-secondary education. The remarks have already drawn angry reaction. Well, a short time ago, former enemies joined together to remember the Japanese submarine attack on Sydney Harbour 50 years ago. Civic leaders from Sydney and Japan watched a reenactment of the encounter and paid tribute to those who died. 21 Australian and Allied servicemen and at least four Japanese lost their lives in the assault on Sydney Harbour. Michael and Lindy Chamberlain's call for an apology from the Northern Territory Government has been knocked back. Chief Minister Marshall Perron says he rejects any suggestion the Territory acted in bad faith when it convicted the Chamberlains of murdering their daughter Azaria. Commenting on their $1.3 million compensation payout, the couple say an apology would have gone a long way to changing the public's attitude towards the case. Now meet the little hero who saved his entire family when their Wollongong home burnt down. He's been given an award for his quick thinking. Sunday, May 17, a near tragic house fire in Wollongong. Five members of the household sleep through the flames and smoke as a blaze takes hold in the lounge room. Everyone except four-year-old Keith Walker. Keith managed to make his way to the locked front door, opening it and allowing concerned friends and neighbours to get in. Today, that bravery was recognised. The smoke from the fire made your mother and father and your sisters and brothers go into a very deep sleep. You heard some friends knocking on the front door and you That's ran to the door and opened it with a key. That's right. But for young Keith, there were some things more important than awards. Well, in sport, grim news for basketball fans, with suggestions the playing career of star Gold Coast roller Mike Mitchell could be over. Mitchell had microsurgery in Wollongong early today after a post-match display of frustration and anger caused him a shocking injury. Mitchell had just scored a game high of 27 points, but the Gold Coast still lost by six. Unfortunately, Mitchell took out his frustration on the way to the dressing room, smashing a small pane of glass. He was so badly cut, his muscle dropped out of his arm. There's a lot of blood. Okay, I don't think it should be filmed. The ambulance was quickly on hand. Mitchell, with his arm heavily bandaged, was taken away. A big day of football around the nation today. In Rugby Union, the touring Scotland side turned in a solid display to hold Queensland to a 15-all draw at Ballymore. While in Sydney, New South Wales had their work cut out against a spirited ACT side, winning 30-17 but rarely dominating. In Rugby League, a young Broncos side, minus their origin players, fought back to down South's 26-18 at Lang Park. 
Balmain toppled Canberra in an exciting match at Leichhardt Oval. St George ended a long Illawarra winning streak, downing the Steelers 21-8 in Wollongong. Norths toppled Penrith 8-2. And Parramatta rallied in the second half to down Newcastle 22-16. In Melbourne, Footscray consolidated top spot on the AFL ladder with a 34-point win over Hawthorne. Other winners today, Essendon over Sydney and Adelaide over North Melbourne. In tennis, fourth-round matches are underway at the Roland Garros Stadium in Paris. In the men's, Croatian Goran Ivanisevic toppled Spain's Carlos Costa in four sets. And Argentina's Gabriela Sabatini advances after winning her encounter with Patricia High of Canada, 6-3, 6-1. Well, in motor racing, Mark Scaife in a Nissan strengthened his grip on the Australian Championship with two seventh round victories in Adelaide. In the first heat of the round today, Scaife led all the way in his four-wheel drive Nissan GTR, with Queenslander Tony Longhurst second in his light but nimble BMW. Heat two produced a similar result, Scaife first and Longhurst second. At the end of competition today, Scaife held 190 championship points, 30 ahead of teammate Jim Richards with two races to go. Finally tonight, a quick look at the weather around the nation. And for the capital cities, the Bureau says rain in Melbourne, Hobart and Adelaide. Elsewhere, mainly fine. That's 10 news to the moment. See you next week.